I sometimes think I wish life had a rewind button because when I think of my past, my life without Christ, when I was not saved, there's only regret that I see and it feels like regret is the only wound the soul does not recover from. But then how do we deal with it as a Christian? Keep listening as we talk more about the pain of regret. Hello and welcome to my podcast. This is Arpana Saladi. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're a first time listener, thank you so much for visiting our page. Hope this podcast will be a blessing to you. Also, please don't forget to check out our work on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram with the handle Arpana Saladi. Hope those videos and documentaries will be edifying and helpful for your Christian walk. If you are a regular listener, thank you so much for visiting again. Please leave us your reviews and your ratings. They will be really helpful and encouraging for us. Thank you so much once again. So while we move on about what we were talking initially, the pain of regret. One of Satan's greatest tool to discourage us is to lead us to shame and an endless cycle of self-blame and regret. Regret about our past. I'm sure you all agree with me when I say that because it makes us feel worthless before God and indirectly it makes us count on our own righteousness which is obviously deficit and Satan keeps blasting us and keeps saying us that you are no good, you are no good, look at your past, you are no good to do God's work, you are no good to stand in God's presence, you are no good to be called a child of God. He uses that hammer, the hammer of regret to keep banging on us and then finally we end up in shame and regret and a complete cycle of self-blame and self-hurt. But how do we take the stumbling blocks of our lives and make them turn into stepping stones? Listen, for an unbeliever and a believer, there is a vast difference in the way we deal with the subject. Because regret for an unbeliever, it often ends in shame, so much of shame that we end up like Judas Iscariot. But for a believer, it helps us, it allows us to look at the cross and the hope Christ offers for us to live a meaningful life in Him and through Him, like Peter, who denied, repented, and came back and lived for Christ. Paul said, He said, One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward to the things that are ahead. Who is this Paul? This is the same Paul who persecuted Christians. This is the same Paul who mocked the church. This is the same Paul who held the courts as people killed Stephen, the first martyr in Acts. And Paul says, I forget those things that are behind and I push forward to the goal. What is the goal? The goal is to honor Christ. To be honest, I hit a rock bottom in my life. All my plans failed. My life looked like a huge failure. It was like I had a big F on my forehead. I was the biggest failure. Every area of my life, there was nothing that I could do, no actions that I could take, nothing. It was all constricted. All my moves were constricted. Everything be became a mechanical life and there was a lot of pride, arrogance and everything, every negative thing, every fruit of the flesh that you can name, it was in me. I was like the prodigal son, in my case, the prodigal daughter who was eating with the swine. But God, which I always keep saying, but God, He used the rock bottom moments of my life to turn me back to Him. And now He has established me in a place where I can help my sisters and my brothers who are at their rock bottom. Dear Christian, God will begin a great work in our lives if we are willing to humble ourselves, forget about our past, leave it at the cross, truly repent, not just regret, but truly repent and come to Him. Because when God rebuilds a life, I'm telling you, when God rebuilds a life, when God strengthens it, no man can shut the door. No man can pull you back, dear Christian. How will we know that God is a healer unless you have at some point fallen sick? How will you know that God is Jehovah Jireh, He is your provider unless you have been in need? How will you know that God is a great redeemer unless you have been held captive? Are you captive to your past? 
to be honest the pain of regret may not leave completely but god's grace will be sufficient but you might say i still feel the pain there are consequences i know i know i face the consequences too but i can assure you that god's grace is much more and it sustains us enough so much as to sustain us i feel the greater the pain the closer we are to the father because those who have been forgiven much love much right i should have died 10 years ago 20 years ago 30 years ago but god he has bought us he has bought me this far so we will never understand the preciousness of grace till we have truly reached the rock bottom point of our lives what can we do as christians about this pain of regret john piper writes in one of his articles and he says there are few things that we need to remember as a christian number 1 christ died for a million regrets don't you think so the kind of savior and the kind of salvation that says to the thief on the cross just hours before he dies he says today you will be with me in paradise think of it just before he dies he realizes that everything everything in his past is regrettable everything nothing was done from faith nothing was done for the glory of christ and he will be with jesus forever welcome that's an amazing reality an unspeakable sweet reality of grace Psalm 133 says if you o lord should mark iniquities o lord who could stand and that's where we start we just start there christ died to cover a thousand regrets 10000 regrets a million regrets number 2 our memories are deceiving Everybody's memory of our past is utterly unreliable because if we start to try to measure the spiritual successes and failures of our past the good versus the bad the loving versus the unloving the helpful versus the unhelpful we are just kidding ourselves because our memory is utterly not up to the task for four reasons because number 1 many of our sins are hidden from us the psalmist says right who can discern his errors declare to me show me my hidden faults number 2 i have long forgotten many things entirely paul says he says in 1 corinthians 1:16 he says i baptized the household of stephanus and beyond that i do not know whether i baptized anyone else or i i did not so he's like i really don't remember exactly paul didn't remember whom he baptized well there are 10000 things that we don't remember which may have been good or which may have been bad we don't know we can't remember them we are absolutely hopeless if we try to rehearse our past and add things up like that number 3 our hearts are deceitful because the heart recalls some things as good that weren't good and that will be deceiving for us paul also ponders his own record of faithfulness and here's what he says i'm not aware of anything against myself but I am not there by acquainted it is the lord who judges me in other words even a good memory and a good record is not decisive christ is decisive so we need to be aware of thinking too highly of our memory whether it is good or bad point number 3 we need to remember yes we need to remember our past but we need to remember our regrets only to a point it's good to remember our sins and feel regret it's good because it leads us to true repentance it's good to feel regret up to a point a life without regrets is built on a mirage right if you don't see sins when you're looking back over your life and you don't regret those sins you're not seeing reality you're not feeling reality you're not seeing a mirage we all have sinned there are plenty of attitudes words deeds relationships things that we have done that are not for the glory of god but selfish not loving but uncaring not from faith but from fear there are plenty of things that came out of our mouths that are not designed for upbuilding and plenty of good paths taken with defective motives when our intentions were wrong a life without regrets is a life built on a mirage that's not reality we need to remember our past and have the right amount of regret because it deepens and intensifies our thankfulness for grace and what else do we need to do we need to press on in faith lay it down all at the foot of the cross look forward 
and move forward. Because whenever we are remembering our failures, it will help us to fly to Christ, love Christ, rest in Christ, cherish grace, sing of His mercy, serve Him with zeal. And that will help us not to remain in regret, but remember how faithful God is. Wherever remembering begins to paralyze us with the weight of failure and remorse and depression so that we don't love Christ more or cherish grace more or serve with greater energy, then let us forget. Forget about that past. Let us move forward, press on by the power of grace for the little time we have on this earth. That's the main word. Press on in faith towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. Dear Christian, a true repentant heart moves on and leaves regret behind because God's forgiveness and grace means it's over, it's done. A life totally committed to God has nothing to fear, nothing to lose and nothing to regret. Thank you so much for listening till now. Hope this podcast is a blessing to you. You are listening to Atna Saladi and this is me signing off. Take care. Bye-bye and God be with you.